This is The Sit Down, and I'm here with actor Jesse Tyler Ferguson, star of ABC's Modern Family. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Now, in between the break, I was <laughs> rushing like a mad woman to tie this fantastic bow tie. That is, is seriously under pressure. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I made it work. I so. mean, people like spend like three hours trying to do it before a wedding. <laughs> you literally had a commercial break. I did, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, and so this is from your collection. Yeah. What was the inspiration behind it? So um, me and my husband started an organization called Tie the Knot, and um, we were sh we initially started it to raise uh, money to help support um, people who are in the trenches fighting for marriage equality. We now have that nationwide, so now we're, we're continuing to raise money through Tie the Knot to uh, protect those uh, civil rights that we fought so hard for in the LGBTQ community, also nationally now. So, mm -hmm. um, and so we we did stuff. We designed this uh, series of bow ties. We also have like uh, lapel pins and socks, and these are lips, lips on your lapel. Um, mm -hmm. We have. Um, the suspenders and all the proceeds from these things that we've created go toward our organization and then we farm them out to people who are doing the good work. Hmm. Are there any like color schemes or designs that you gravitate towards? I really love this one that I'm wearing that my friend Jacob actually designed. Hmm. Jacob is um, a friend of mine who's uh, a non-binary, non-gender conforming uh, uh, author. Um, oh, really, Jacob Tobia. Yes, Jacob they're doing Tobiah. amazing work. Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. love them. And uh, we asked Jacob if they would do a few bow ties. And oh, excellent. This is one of my faves. So you have uh, the bow ties, lapel pin socks. Do you have any other fashion aspirations? Um, gosh, I mean, just, <laughs> you know, I, I, I would love to get into shoe wear. Oh, Why not? Oh, yeah, of course. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Also, like, I mean, I, I love doing stuff for charity, but um, it, it'd be fun to, like, make a profit, too. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I hear that. Well, I want to talk about uh, something else that you're working on this month, of course, is the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall mm -hmm. Riot. Um, you are producing a, a documentary right. uh, about the riot, and you're going to be on the front lines, actually, filming at the Pride celebrations this year. Right. It's World Pride here in New York, and it's the 50th anniversary of Stonewall, so... There's going to be so many people in New York, and we want to create this documentary because I think a lot of um, newer members of the LGBTQ community don't have a lot of, um, they, they don't know a lot about Stonewall, mm. and they don't know the history. And um, there's also with, you know, Grindr and all these, like, you know, the apps, people aren't necessarily, I think it's really important to protect these these communal spaces mm. in, in the queer community, and um, Stonewall certainly is the, the cornerstone of those types of places. So we're creating this documentary and we're going to be on the front lines trying to capture as much as we can with this once in a lifetime moment at the end of the month. Yeah. Have you thought about any moments in history or even like just moments that you're expecting to capture that you really hope uh, viewers resonates with viewers or, or that they really take away from it? Well, I hope that it's it doesn't live as like a time capsule. I want to certainly yeah. interview people who who were a part of the Stonewall riots, but also I want to interview people who are um, younger and uh, of a new generation. And I want to sort of meet those i want to have those at the meeting of those minds um and you know it's so tricky with the documentary because you can't really decide what you want to do you sort yeah. of have to let it reveal itself to you so we're excited to see what we can come up with yeah well uh you know speaking of lgbtq visibility and representation you play one of the most famous gay dads on tv in modern family and this year abc announced that the upcoming 11th season will be its last yeah. what will you miss most Oh, I mean, it, it sounds so cliche, but we are we, we really truly are a family and not just the actors in the show, but some of the crew members have been with us for the past 11 years. And, you know, we've seen people get married. We've seen people have kids and it's it's a truly an extended family. And like not seeing those people every day is I'm already going through withdrawal. Yeah. Do, who do you think will cry the most when you have me? To <laughs> 1, thousand percent me. I've already started crying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Mitch and Cam uh, now have much more company uh, as far as queer TV characters go um, since the show debuted. Do you have any other favorite queer characters on TV or shows that resonate with you? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I loved Will and Grace. That's, mm -hmm. that's a perfect example of a show that held the door open for us. And I feel like we wouldn't be able to be on TV without shows like Will and Grace. Um, I loved Glee. Um, I love the spectrum of the gay community that they, sh that they covered on Glee. Um, there's also so much great stuff, new stuff coming out. And I feel like there's also so much, so many places we can go. There's mm -hmm. so many queer stories that we still haven't told. Um, I think we need a lot more uh, help with, with um, uh, transgender um, mm -hmm. uh, um, representation on TV. I think Pose is doing a great job with mm -hmm. that. We can go farther. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited by the future. Hmm. Now, you uh, you got your start on Broadway, right? And, I did. Yeah, and it was recently announced that you'll be returning in 2020 for a revival of the play Take Me Out. Mm -hmm. What drew you to that project? Um, well, I was offered it, and I was like, <laughs> it's, it's a show that <laughs> I love so much. To, yeah, to no. <laughs> um, it's a play I loved, and I saw it when it was originally on, um, I think about 16 years ago in New York. 
Um, and the part that they've offered me is a part that was so brilliantly mm. played by Dennis O'Hare mm -hmm. and a performance that I will never forget. So I'm equally terrified and excited to take on this role because he was iconic in this part. Hmm. I mentioned you, you got your start on Broadway when you were actually 21, and you once played 40 different characters in a one-man satire. Um, what do you love about stage acting versus TV? I mean, I do love both, but there's just something about being in, you know what it is, I'm a control freak. <laughs> and when you do something on television or in film, you an editor takes that performance away and then stitches it together and it's this thing that you don't really necessarily have any say over. And I love being on stage in a room with an audience and I get to dictate what the experience is like. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there is another famous Jesse in the show with you, mm -hmm. Jesse Williams, who's also from an ABC hit show. And as the Broadway We're vet... We're only casting people named Jesse who are on ABC. Exactly. That's it. Sorry it's to everybody else. It's going to be a else. challenge, but we're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> have you given him any advice as he prepares for his stage oh. debut? Gosh, no. I mean, uh, <laughs> I we we contacted each other on social media um, recently. We had a few. He slid into my DMs as one uh, does. As one does. <laughs> uh, I'm just so excited. I've kn I know him socially. Um, he's such an amazing advocate. So I'm already mm. like a fan of his as, as a person. Um, and I just think he's so talented. Um, I'm I'm stoked. If he has any questions, I'm certainly available for a, a, a coffee. Great. We could talk about things. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, speaking of Broadway, you and James Corden had a really funny moment at the Tonys uh, on the red carpet. And afterwards, you tweeted, I need a millennial to turn this into a GIF and return it to me. Yeah. Consider it homework. Jesse Tyler, Ferg Jesse Tyler Ferguson to James Corden. Don't fuck it up. Yeah. And you actually got one that same day. I got several. You got yeah. several. I chose the one that he, that included the text. Some, <laughs> so he got that 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 millennial got an A plus. But a, that a lot, millennial got an A plus. But the, 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 they came in very quickly. They're oh, very okay. fast. I have no idea how you even create a GIF. Huh. That, I, that, I, is that how you say GIF or GIF? I, I, you know, no one knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> so someone out there knows. I I go with GIF. Um, if you had any other assignment for millennials, what assignment would you like to give them? Oh gosh, um, my assignment for millennials. <laughs> is to get out and be active and to also just find something that you care about and support it and be loud about it. Um, I, I'm, I can offer some suggestions, you know, the LGBTQ community always needs more allies, um, specifically our, our trans brothers and sisters. I think we, we really need to do better there. But I think just being an advocate for something is what I would like millennials to, to do. And anyone, really, that's just, that goes for everyone. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for taking the time to thank chat with you. me. And another assignment is to go get one of these cute bow ties from the thetiebar.com. You can catch Jesse in the final season of Modern Family this fall on ABC. Up next, Zach finds out how we can all have a healthier summer. Oh.